just uh, archaeological metadata for 10 minutes or so, and then we're straight into exercise one. Um, so for anyone who is a complete novice, metadata is data about data. And hopefully that's the last time we say that today. And much of our metadata is in our um, recording manuals and our specialist methodologies. And uh, what those do uh, is provide us with the, method, uh, the methodology of what we did and how we came about with that data, defining the data and the thesauri that support that data and what that data, uh, data is. Um, so the good news as archaeologists is that we're well rehearsed in this. In fact, in some respects, we almost get complacent about, about our data because we're so used to um, understanding what the uh, terms are. Further metadata needs to be recorded so that the repository um, can understand, or anyone using the archive can use, uh, understand it as a collection, so the repository can preserve it, and so that the, uh, there is security of exactly what the data was when you transferred it to the repository. Um, here's an example of what happens when you start to strip your data off your pro forma and remove it from its context. So here, the stratigraphic, uh, stratigraphic matrix, my favourite one, because it can do my head in, um, gives it the, the, the context that these are above and these are below. But once you start to define it in cellular data, what is above and what is below it is all depends on the, the field definition of that sentence. Is the sentence, this context is, or is the sentence, these contexts are above or below? And so the data you end up with a root or tree uh, matrix, depending on how you decided to translate that, or how, depending how you decided the archaeologist was to find that word. Here's another one that was, in case um, I haven't made my point enough. So this is, a, uh, just grab this really simple piece of data, assessment data for environmental um, information, and then what can we, what can we know about, what can we, does this data tell us about the method? Well, I was familiar with the site, so then I knew they were sample numbers, not context numbers. I did have access to the assessment report, so I started to understand that that is not count, that is frequency, and then I actually understood how frequency is defined as well. But you can, even though it's a really simple piece of data, you can completely start to um, pull it apart on how people understand it. So here you have uh, lots of um, shortenings, which you'll need to find out understand. And also, it starts to merge um, metadata here, uh, data here, where you have actually these preservation um, sites, and uh, you've got mineralizing and char uh, charge in there as well. And so, how you would define common name potentially can, as a field definition, is completely, was could be completely wrong. And so, we do say, well, it's all in the report. But the CEPA Finds Group report by Alice Catamol um, says that it actually isn't all in the report. So in fact, you can't, you, can't, <laughs> you can't even understand the data if you have the report. So there you have it. So, so they're not, um, how strategies were done are not routinely recorded in grey literature reports. Specialist reports don't make explicit reference to other standards. And then, of course, we know that when we put these reports into monograph, they're also stripped down as well, so that's fun. So part of the uh, recording metadata is understanding the audience. So these recording manuals on your tables, you can, well these are the ones that sections split out, but these are the uh, whole recording manuals. You can see how that is actually uh, a huge amount of information. I have, in, I have it from the ADS, but in fact not a single recording manual has been deposited with an archaeological archive. And so, <laughs> so um, the metadata is the, th the thing that will describe your data after deposition. So the, the, and Matt, the uh, audience for this is um, how to understand recording in the field. So in some respect, in some places, you can find that the field definition is completely buried in uh, several paragraphs of how to uh, of methodology, so that. Um, 
it's very unclear how the data it can be is defined in the Ford Manual. And then the, you get the extreme opposite in some sections where the, what the data is isn't defined at all in the reporting manual because we've made assumptions that everyone knows what that field would mean. And, um, at, and at the same time, the pro forma um, don't always include all the types of data you might be recording. You, uh, the same way you're limited to those two sheets of A4, um, or two sides of A4, and so pro forma merges data which should be autonomized. And so the pro forma, even referring back to them, doesn't always explain all the data that you have recorded. Um, and it's a bit the same on digital recording, and how we, as soon as you start to run out of column space across your screen, you start to shorten your field definition names, and therefore what actually the, what um, actually should be in there can be like a need to explain what your data is, or can almost be a full sentence, when in some respects you might just put it down to a single letter. Um, and that's why metadata is so important. And then, really, what, if you look at it, and the, the recording manuals we have in the middle, and then and also the limited amount of recording manuals I've managed to collect for fines and enviro, you can see that these recording manuals exist for a reason, is to explain to many so that they can record at the same time, um, record to the same standard at the same time. And when you get into the specialist data, you start to see that, that uh, the parts of those recording manuals are, have a lot less data, uh, um, definition in them, and because they are, as people start to make the assumption that you're recording for a single, one person is recording for themselves. And so um, that is the, where our metadata is held, but until we transfer it into metadata templates, we can't understand the data. So today we're trying to create a soft standard as well as getting familiar with metadata creation and what, how you need to express something. Um, so these are, quick, very quickly, because it's part of exercise one, the uh, metadata templates that the ABS require. Audio, audio and visual doesn't have a metadata template. You have to call you up. And thanks, Dave, I'm your audio support here. <laughs> and um, that wasn't on VHS anyway. And so, and then this is the, uh, now again, these are, the, uh, these are the fields that you need to fill in for the spreadsheets and very similar to tables with further definition of two, you know, primary fields and that kind of thing. But what we're focusing on today is the field name, what you describe, how you name your field and how you then describe that field. And we are not going to go into Unless they're really simple and obvious, like grams and, um, and liters and that kind of thing, we're not going to go into the thesauri. But it might be worth, as we do this, marking up where a thesauri is needed on a, on a field field definition. Because that, I think recording manuals at this point can be very similar, but once you get into what the thesauri is needed, then they're separate. And that's, that is for uh, another, another, a whole other session. Uh, <laughs> So the other fields you have give you the security of this is what it is. Tell the person what the whole uh, file is supposed to, uh, supposed to cover, and then it gives it at the end of it the your repository, the for the short code of the plan it's basically ABS. The, <laughs> And then just finally, because we are touching on images on the images and uh, the photos and drawings table, this is from my old 1970s CU recording manual, the fields that we record for um, photos. So, sorry, I'll give you a that sheet, but you might not know that. You can probably come down to this screen. Um, so we record the shape of context, and facing and scale. And this is the metadata that the ABS uses to record because they want to be able to use all of the images as part of a, a wider collection. And so what this does is you have, you will potentially have, and again, I'll put the footnotes around this, you will potentially have a spreadsheet index of your photos and scenarios at archaeological, and that will be an archaeological archive item that is in fact metadata of the photos that is your metadata. You also need to have a metadata spreadsheet that the ABS require. And that, what the big thing for archaeology is what that does for, at least at Hofstra, I think, 
is completely blown up our flow because whilst you're out in the field, it's not often that we enhance the photo record, but actually at the end, if you're doing APS metadata, what you have to do is um, then go back and add an analytical metadata for each subject that you've queried. Um, and so that is just something to think about how that changes uh, the flow. And maybe that's one of the reasons why we're struggling to do metadata because you have to think about that as a task, that's quite a big task, can be quite a big task to do. And so if you're not resourcing that at the end, then you can.